Welcome to the Operation Center's Simplified Deduplication and Cloud Storage. In version 7.1.3, we introduced the idea of container storage pool. And container storage pool allows us to provide inline deduplication and optimized usage of cloud object storage. This results in increased performance and reduced TSM database size, while massively increasing the scale of deduplication. On the overview page, we still show our storage pools defined with device classes, and these would be your disk or tape storage pools. What's new is our container storage pools. We have three types. We have a directory, an on-premises cloud, and an off-premises cloud. In order to add a new container, you'll go to Storage, Storage Pools, Click on the plus pool icon. The wizard will first ask you for a name of the new storage pool. We'll call it our DDoop pool. Then use the pull down to select a server. For the first example, we'll define a directory container. The overflow pool for a directory container provides additional storage space if a directory fills up. The data that is written to a directory pool is distributed across the directories that you specify. You can enter a fully qualified path name or a path that's relevant to the TSM instant directory. We'll go ahead and enter Tucson servers. If node replication is already set up for the server you're defining this container on, you will be prompted to enter a protection pool on the target server. Now, this storage pool protection schedule replicates the data at a storage pool level, unlike the replicate node, which replicates at a node level. Okay, we've added the dedupe pool. You'll now see this dedupe container storage pool listed on the storage pool screen. If we fast forward to when actual backups have been taken, you'll now see the capacity used and the estimated capacity of that directory container. If you hover over the percent savings, you'll see the bytes saved and the dedupe ratio achieved by using this inline next-gen dedupe. If you drill down into the details page, you'll see the capacity used over the last two weeks, the status of the protection schedule, which protection pool this data is being replicated to, and what's the target server for replication. The overflow pool is listed as are the directories and the usage information. If we drill down into the directories, it will list the directories that are being utilized and the containers that are in each of those directories. It will also give you the status of those directories and the amount of capacity being utilized in each of those directories. Let's go ahead and click the Add Storage Pool icon again. And this time, let's choose to do an on-premises container. The primary difference between a directory and an on-premise cloud is that the on-premise cloud is utilizing the TCP IP based storage instead of fiber channel networks. The primary difference between an on-premise cloud and an off-premise cloud is in terms of data management, not the cloud location. So for example, if your cloud storage is hosted in your data center, but is managed by an external cloud provider, then you would be creating an off-premises cloud. Inline deduplication occurs automatically for all of these containers. The containers also support client-side deduplication. If you do use a traditional volume-based storage, you could still utilize the legacy server-side dedupe or client-side dedupe, and those are out-of-band dedupes. So you will need to specify the connection information that the server uses to access the cloud when sending and receiving storage pool data. By default, the pool is created with read-write access. Encrypting the dedupe data for cloud containers is optional for on-premises containers, but is mandatory for off-premises containers. If the client encrypts the data before it's sent to a container, that data will not be deduped, and it will be placed in a container specifically for client-side encrypted data. But you will need to define at least one OpenStack storage policies, and these policies specify how data is managed in the cloud and are separate from the TSM policies. 
Data being written to the cloud containers is written as object storage. If it's an on-premises cloud, we use the OpenStack Swift protocol by default. We'll go ahead and do the protect storage pool again. And we've added in the storage pool for the cloud. Here you see our new on-premises cloud. Notice that even when data has been backed up to this cloud, there is not a maximum size. And this is because we assume that the cloud storage has no limit. If we dive into the details page, this looks the same as a directory container with the exception of the activity over two weeks. The data tab records the size of data moved and the request tab records the number of operations to move that data. Some cloud vendors charge on requests, some on an amount of data, and some on both. If we go into the properties page, we can alter things like the read write access, the maximum number of simultaneous writes, overflow pools. You can also unlock the object store and update the information pertinent to the cloud. One other area that's been updated are the daily reports that can be sent to different administrators and different emails. We now list the status of the directory, the off-premises, and the on-premises storage pools. So in summary, 713 introduces the concept of containers, which provide for the new inline next generation deduplication. These containers will simplify deduplication and optimize the usage of cloud object storage. They will increase the scalability of deduplication and minimize the impact to the Tivoli Storage Manager database. Thank you.